Hello, Jax. Fahad here. I would like to take a look at the energy sector. We have seen a little bit pickup in volatility in the last couple of days. We have also seen a little bit pickup in put option activity within energy sector. And the sector is coming back to light because technically sector has been acting quite negatively with crude oil starting to break down again. So I thought I should come back to this with some added color that I put together over the weekend. In this particular case, I want to actually focus on pressure pump stocks. And there's a couple of names over here that we're just going to fly through real quick. Starting off, for those who do not know, and I'm surprised how little this particular chart right over here is talked about in the mainstream media. For those who do not know, before 200 billion tariffs were announced on China effective September 24th, the U.S. was exporting approximately 16 million barrels of crude oil to China per month. Guess what happened as soon as those 200 billion tariffs were announced? Immediately a total crash. Basically full, complete, at, um, um, uh, total, absolute halt of any kind of importation of U.S. crude oil to China. We went from gradually from producing, from exporting 10 million barrels, 12 million barrels, 14, 16 million barrels per month down to straight to zero. And it has not picked up since then. There was a little bit of a shipment that went from U.S. to China around middle of January. It was a small shipment. But aside from that, China is not buying U.S. crude oil. Plain and simple. They won't say this on mainstream media, but this is the hard fact. And the data is already available over there. Now, as a result, this is what has happened. This is the crude oil inventory in Cushing, Oklahoma, excluding SPR. When China was buying a crude oil and we had a healthy economy as well, the inventories were coming down, despite the fact that the crude oil production was rising because everybody was consuming a lot. As soon as China stopped buying a crude oil, the inventory started to build sharply. This was effectively on the 1st of October, right after tariffs were placed on China. The Cushing, Oklahoma inventory has increased by 48 million barrels since China stopped buying U.S. crude oil. This is the main reason why the crude oil has been coming down so sharply. Now, recently, technically speaking, this has been actually starting to, starting to break down from here again. Now, this is the chart as of last night. This morning, crude oil is down by another 2%, so it's actually already starting to break down again. The reason why I want to come back to energy sector is because this particular case has already been laid out in front of Jaguar clients many times in the last three months. In fact, Jaguar clients has been pretty actively shorting the sector for the last three months. We have made quite a bit of money in a lot of different stocks, and we currently have a few short positions right now as well. I wanted to come back to this because I want to just add not only a new color, but also I want you to be aware of a particular risk in case if there's a change in character between the U.S. and China trade deals. To start off, here's a comment that I presented in the Jaguar first quarter outlook that went out to clients in early January. One particular comment that I write over here. I believe ONG CapEx is subject to cuts. They are necessary to balance supply demand to stabilize oil price, meaning the entire 6% weighting of the S&P 500 index is subject to downward earnings revision in 2019. Pretty negative view that I presented in the first quarter Jaguar outlook, but I was not negative enough. JP Morgan is even more negative. JP Morgan says, exacerbating the negative estimate trends, blah, blah, blah. We see no choice for operators. They must cut activity levels in order to rein in outspends. We see the risk for material negative consensus estimate revisions at strip pricing. JP Morgan is 16% below consensus regarding its earnings estimates of the energy sector for fiscal year 2019, and they are 20% below consensus for fiscal year 2020. Why do I come back to all of this? Because in Essentially, the direction of crude oil market from here, as well as the entire energy sector, really comes down to two simple things. One or two things need to happen for the energy sector to basically bounce back hard. Either the China has to resume buying the U.S. crude oil, which will be dependent on this trade deal for which the 90-day window is coming to end pretty soon on March 1st, 
or simply put, U.S. production needs to come down sharply in order to balance the market. The ENP cuts have to begin. So the question is, on the second point, because we do not know the state of the U.S.-China trade deal at this time, but at a minimum, is there any evidence yet that the U.S. ENPs are actually starting to cut production? Let's take a look. There are two kinds of markets out there, the private market and the publicly traded market. You may not know this, but 50% of all the rigs that are out there in the United States, 50% are actually in the hands of private energy and, um, exploration and production companies, private ENPs, 50% share. They've already started to cut. They've already cut their rig counts by 62 or 12% from the November peak, which is good. This is exactly what you need for the crude oil market to balance. But guess what? To my surprise, so much crash, 40% sell-off in crude oil since October, and here we are, crude oil sitting at break-even point of most shale gas companies, around $51, $52 per barrel, but still, the large caps and the majors have not started cutting. In fact, since the November peak, the large caps publicly traded ENPs have actually added 19 rig counts. This is bad. Now, let's take a look at the U.S. rig count by the ENP operator. This is a very interesting chart that comes from Bank of America Research. This is the 2014 and 2015. You can see how the, the rig count, we saw drastic cuts. Take a look over here. Take a look over here. There have not been any movement in the rig counts at all. This is quarterly quarterly data this is a most recent figure so let's do this let's take a cross section of this part right over here and take a look at it closely you can see right there as of february 1st 2019 the total rig count um, was about all the way up here it has actually been quite stable all the way to the same level where it was in let's say first quarter second quarter of 2018 last year the majors rig count as of right now is 124 it's above 103 where it was at the end of the third quarter of 2018. The large caps, the pioneers, the, the EOG resources, Concho, res, con, uh, uh, Concho resources, they're at 321 recounts as of February 1st. That's above the 300 level where they were at the end of the third quarter of 2018 when the crude oil market peaked. However, in the private companies, private ENPs, they have cut down to 474 versus 509 at the end of the third quarter. This picture is telling you something. There, has, there is basically essentially tremendous amount of hesitation on most parts of the U.S. oil and gas companies to start cutting production. Maybe they're hopeful that China will come back to the market and will start buying U.S. crude oil again. Maybe they simply see crude oil being already at the bottom and will start recovering from here. But without inventory levels coming down, which, which requires China to come back to the market, I don't see that happening. And that's where lies the risk. Here's another picture. This is simply consolidating the majors, the large caps, small caps, like and the privates. You can see the fourth quarter average and the current position of the total rig counts. You can see they're all adding. Everyone is actually adding rig counts except the private ENPs. Those are the only ones. So, in absence of a large trade deal with China that resumes exports, it's hard to see energy sector bottoming until they all start cutting production and that's essentially the key message over here now with that said if there is a production cut a sharp production cut coming in the u.s enp especially by the large caps and the enps all right we know already it's happening in the private companies the companies that provide pressure pumps essentially uh, oil equipment and so on to hydraulic fracking those are the ones that are going to suffer the most a few names with exposure hp helmrick and Payne. Here's the one. This has 23% exposure to private ENPs that are already cutting and 52% exposures to large stocks. Here's Patterson Energy PTEN that has 43% exposure to private companies. So it's already starting to feel the pressure of CapEx cuts. Here are their charts. This is PTEN. It has come back up to this resistance around $13 per share. I could see this basically crack through this uptrend res uh, support and go straight back down. Similarly, here is FRAC, another stock. 
this has been grinding higher trading uh, trending along this support levels i could see this basically break down and go down similarly res or the company called rpc incorporated symbol res this has been in a firm downtrend for quite some time this has one of the highest exposures to private ENPs where the cuts are currently taking place this is starting to basically fall through ten dollars per share at this moment here's the most important thing in the in the final piece of this um, a, a little history over here back in 2014 and 2015 there you know when the crude oil market is strong and the production is rising you basically the ENPs go out and they drill a well and then they bring the completion crew to come and complete these wells before they start actually drilling the oil out of the ground what has been happening especially in the private ENPs market right now is that is what they call DUC drill but uncompleted wells lots and lots and lots of wells have been drilled but the completion crew was essentially sent home until the, the the visibility in the crude oil market becomes better and as a result the percentage the gap between the wells that have been drilled but not completed yet is continues to widen here's a fantastic chart that comes from seaport global research implied versus observed demand this is the prior cycle and this is the current cycle notice very interesting picture over here there's a 20 percent gap between the implied and the observed demand of U.S. pressure pumping stocks. This is much wider than any other time. We did not see this gap so much wider previous, life, previous cycle either. Usually the run rate is about 4 to 5 percent and that's pretty common. What this is, is saying essentially is there are 20 percent wells out there that have been drilled but not completed yet. The, co the completion crew was essentially sent home. These are the completion crew. These are the folks that essentially are part of the CapEx cycle that these pressure pumping stocks depend on. If there is a trade deal in China with China and China comes back to the United States and starts buying U.S. crude oil again, there will be a rush by the energy sector to start completing these wells that have been drilled but not completed and as a result the work orders for a stock like such as this res essentially pick up sharply this is one of the key reasons why the stocks are technically acting very negatively and i think it's the right case even now still at this particular point to keep pressing them to the short side keep betting on them on the downside but there's a risk over here to the bear case and the bear case risk is if there's a trade deal with china and we suddenly see a sharp spike of crude oil exports to china after march 1st you could see a stock like this sharply spike because their capex dollars will come back simply for the fact that they the gap between the completed the gap between the drilled wells and the completed wells is now at a new record high 20 percent of all united states wells have been drilled but not completed yet just waiting for the work order to come in this stock is down 63 percent from its 52 week high only in the past 14 months or so a name like this could have a significant rally if there's a trade deal in China. If there's no trade deal with China and the inventory levels continue to rise, these are the sh pumping stocks that will continue to get pressed down as CapEx dollars will continue to get cut. That's it from me. Thank you very much. See you next time.